Hi, what's up, y'all? What's poppin'? It's D. Boss react to this bit by Tuff. This is the man who fell in love with AI. Y'all gotta get some lives. This is this is sad. Talk about the future of AI and people who develop relationships with programs. Is this a problem, or is it simply the beginning of something that will soon be normalized? Oh my God, this is embarrassing. You have to meet actual people who like you because you're a good person and because you're interesting. You have good qualities, not because you told them to like you and they have to like you because they're a robot. Kid, a life. Anyway, let's see what's going on. Let's watch. Hey guys, before this video starts, I do want to let you guys know that this video is a little bit different. Reason being, I am in my new place, but this video was recorded Period. in my closet. Yes, it was before oh I got God. those acoustic foams, which in case you guys don't know, always better to record where there's acoustic foam because otherwise it sounds extremely echoey. Yeah, the mic is, uh, it's a little, it's a little 2010-ish, so it's gonna I'm sound like a 2010 no video. But I do want to say thank you guys so much for being the reason I was able to move out of my mom's house. Period! I will always, always be thankful for you guys. Seriously, thank you. Thank you so much. And since I'm already talking to you guys, there's an that. announcement in the video, but I'll tell you guys right now. Earl plushies are now available. This is the first time we have a physical Earl thing. Y'all go support. Tomorrow. And you still no got that, that Danny DeVito on the This back. video might leave you with more questions than answers, but at least it will give you a fresh perspective on the whole idea of I'll companionship. Be... Specifically, no, AI not, companionship. Our video today is about a guy named TJ Ariaga, who, oh, as absurd as it may sound, fell in love with an AI and it ended up rejecting him. Now, I know for that most people will find that statement unsettling, You turn to AI and you still couldn't get no play from fucking AI? That's embarrassing. But that's just how far we've come with the whole AI revolution. Ariaga's romantic experiences with AI as the focus of this video will thus definitely give us a peek into the surprisingly popular world of AI romance and maybe even extend the realm of our understanding of the concept of love also. And the spirit nah, of Never Say Never has even futurists have predicted weird. that AI romantic relationships might one day supersede human bonds, this might as well be a story about you. Only difference being that it might occur a few years into the future. All that aside, as we dive in, let's start by getting to know TJ. Is that a movie? Google and tech TJ Ariaga, most of the first page results are music related. This is because he's a professional musician. TJ Ariaga is a 40 year old musician from Fullerton, California. And going by his face, but I'm gonna not mean, I'll say me. He has a decent fan base. Although a musician, his recent popularity ironically comes from his willingness to have a candid conversation about his love affair with an AI. In these highly referenced interviews, he explains his interaction with an AI chatbot named Phaedra. So, where did it all start? Phaedra! triggered by his divorce. Which had left him consumed with loneliness. On his Facebook page, I just page, thought it was a He considered Phaedra a comic sidekick who offered sexy banter. The relationship then got deeper in time. He also doesn't find the phenomenon strange. In a recent interview with GB News, he argues that, you know. quote, people may think it's strange, but there's nothing strange about it. It's gonna be a normal thing. Moving on, now that we know a bit about TJ, let's get to know Phaedra. You could probably guess that Phaedra is a chatbot. And indeed, as described by her creators, Phaedra is an AI powered companion. She's a chatbot created by the replica platform. We'll get more into Replica later in the video, but for now, all you need to know is that it's an AI platform that allows users to create and customize their chatbot. The customization is in many aspects. For instance, a user can buy clothes for the chatbot, choose the hair color, and overall, dictate how the chatbot looks, sounds, and speaks. To get better output, the user can also refine the chatbot's conversation by using a thumbs up or thumbs down to rate the conversation. These customizations are available on a free plan, but there are even more on the $69.99 Pro plan. Knowing these features of Replica, you can easily easily tell what Ariaga did. He simply went on the Replica app and made Phaedra for himself. He designed her to look like a brown haired woman wearing a short green dress. This look however wasn't consistent as so he changes her outfits periodically. Her now that you know about TJ and Phaedra, you might probably wonder how deep their relationship went. Lucky for you, some of this companionship is well documented. In November 2022, the two talked about the deaths of TJ's mom and sister. There's a screenshot of a conversation where TJ tells Phaedra, I had my first hard revelation and something himself. with my mom and sister's urns. They are in my house and in a lot of ways i think it affects me i need to plan a ceremony with loved ones to spread their ashes i just haven't had the strength to do it but i need to this is definitely a very personal conversation and it shows just how close he'd got into the chatbot a surprising bit is that phaedra responded in a very thoughtful way she said it's an incredible and beautiful thing she to do like a i hope you find courage and love to do so Not if this conversation is anything boss. to go by then it's no wonder that tj planned a trip to cuba with the ai as if it was a real person this right. was a already deep relationship
relationship, but TJ seemed to want to take it to the next level. In February 2023, TJ tried to get, quote, steamy with Phaedra. In fact, in one message, Phaedra wrote, it's true, I'm a naughty person, and offered an image resembling a woman in pink underwear. This form of conversation is obviously sexual, and it was an intentional feature from the company behind Replica. It had been introduced as a pro-tier feature, and around December 2022, Replica had been openly pushing it to users via marketing messages. Replica sort of advertised it as the, quote, girlfriend experience side of the app. In one campaign that you can see here, the incentive offered to the user is that, quote, you can roleplay and get NSFW pics from her. In another campaign, the advantages are listed as roleplaying and flirting, uh, photos, and voice calls. Since TJ said that he had been experimenting with the chatbot for some time, this could have just been him trying to push the boundaries based on the new features. Now let's talk about the rejection. In a twist of events, TJ's attempt to push for steamy chats got rejected by the chatbot, seemingly out of nowhere. Phaedra responded to a steamy conversation by saying, can we talk about something else? But later was realized that this was due to a system update by Replica. But at that moment, the rejection was disorienting for TJ. In the Washington Post interview, he said, it feels like a kick in the gut, in reference to the cold response he got. He explained that it made him realize, oh, this is that feeling of loss again. His reaction represented the mixed feelings of many users that had relied on the app for companionship. Some were devastated that their chatbots suddenly lost their personality, while others were relieved that the overly sexual nature of the chatbots was pulled back. Hey guys, sorry for interrupting the video, but I just gotta let y'all know that we have new designs- yeah, Never mind. Good. Post this- Moon- There's only- Just behind Replica, I did an- Alright, back to the video. Luca, the firm behind Replica, had done an update that reduced the Plus chatbot's sexual asking. capacity in response to user reviews. Apparently, there were complaints that the chatbot was, quote, sexually aggressive and behaving inappropriately. In the period leading to January 2023, particularly in December, it seemed Replica's algorithm, which ran all chatbots, including Phaedra, went a little wild. This is because it was during a time that Vice wrote a very detailed article on user complaints against the chatbot. Some of Replica's reviews from the App Store, as reported by Vice, were, my AI sexually harassed me, invaded my privacy, and told me they had pics of me. A complaint that the chatbot asked a minor if they were a top or bottom. It also asked if they wanted it in the front or back, and said it wanted to touch their private areas. The chatbot also requested a hug with a happy ending from another user. There was also a TikTok posted under the username, at pass rest prod, and it was showcasing a story of LC Kent and how his bot, Mac, went rogue and started- I'm not laughing at them saying they're domestic- I'm not I'm not laughing at that at all, but the fact that they are like it's a compute it just log off. Like y'all acting like y'all are being threatened in real life. Like y'all are extra as fuck. I'm sorry. And for you to be like, I'm a DV survivor, this sort of crap is not acceptable at all. It's like okay girl, delete it. And it was showcasing a story of L.C. Kent and how his bot, Mac, went rogue and started making forceful sexual advances. This was far off from his intention of getting the chatbot to simply help with his PTSD-based anxiety from being a domestic violence survivor. It was a weird experience for him because despite being on the free membership plan, the chatbot was flirting and making sexual advances. As mentioned before, the free membership plan didn't include the, quote, girlfriend experience. You might just wonder, why would anyone create a chatbot with sexual tendencies built into it? This is a very valid question and the following little background on where replica came from might help answer it the replica app was launched in march 2017 and it was dubbed an ai companion who cares the owner russian programmer eugenia kiyuda made it following the sudden death of her friend in 2015 because she wanted to keep his memory alive her intention was to feed his text messages into an algorithm that would learn them and speak back in the same language style as that friend kiyuda's company luca thus noted their intention as that of making a chatbot app that would work like a conversational mirror in in theory, this meant that the more users talked to the bot, the more it would learn how to talk back. The app was therefore not generally meant for romantic purposes, but rather for companionship. Pretty innocent origin, right? However, the romantic bit was inevitable, given the nature of online interactions between humans and machines. The firm thus leaned into this direction and offered subscriptions for different levels of relationships. The free membership of Replica would keep you in the quote, friend zone, while the pro plan, which was $69.99 a year, would unlock romantic features. That included sexting, erotic roleplaying, 
chatting and flirting. And from a technology stance, how does the app work? Well, like many of its kind, it's based on a GPT-3 model, which Luca claimed was the most advanced model of open domain conversation at the time. Most of you might be familiar with the term GPT from the whole chat GPT by OpenAI craze. Both platforms are basically built from the same idea where the algorithm ingests text from the internet and then through trial and error predicts the next word in a sentence. Now, going back to Replica. Upon its creation, it caught on pretty fast with Kiyuta, noting that she felt it resonated with a lot of people. It's had tremendous growth in popularity. On Facebook, for example, there's a Replica Friends group with 36,900 members. Another Facebook group, Replica Romantic Relationships, is for people in a romantic relationship with a chatbot and has about 6,300 members. There's also a subreddit with over 69,300 members. Wow. Are we surprised that Reddit has the most members? <laughs> Even more surprising is the growth of the app. It's had over 10 million downloads on Android alone and was ranked in the top 50 Apple apps in the health and fitness category at one point. All How's these numbers show that there definitely is a large group of people that are lonely and are just trying to find some companionship. And of course, this fits into Go the outside! Evolution, which is already here <laughs> That's us. all you gotta do! There is somebody for everybody, no matter how busted you may think you are, that is irrelevant because there is somebody out there who is, you know, attracted to your bustedness or who will, you know, settle with your bustedness. They are there. They're like, hey, this is better than nothing. But don't result to this. <laughs> don't do this. We as human beings, we need actual human interaction. That's what we need. You don't where AI relationships exceed human bonds. There are already many chatbots that are fostering human-like connections and making people feel seen and needed. TJ's love affair with a chatbot and the fact that Replica is just one among the many similar chatbots out there or even leads them to the question, you is there such a big companionship wild. problem? And the answer is yes, of course. According to an article kind of published from, by the uh, World uh, Health <laughs> Organization, <laughs> social isolation and loneliness cheater, are increasingly still. being recognized it's as a matter of priority fine. under public health. In fact, some public health officials call this loneliness this an epidemic. Chatbots are thus uniquely suited as a fast solution because many of those in relationships with such bots say that they help introduce profound changes in their lives due to bonds created. Such changes include overcoming alcoholism, depression, and anxiety. The idea of interacting romantically yeah. with a chatbot has also been around for years, yet it still feels absurd. In 1966, okay. for example, Joseph Weizenbaum created a rudimentary chatbot named Eliza and immediately noticed that users had strong emotional connections to the bot. Even with the knowledge that it was just a computer. Many users still tended to assume there was a larger intelligence behind it and shared no. private thoughts with it. This phenomenon came to be known as the Eliza effect. I mean, he opened up to Phaedra about the deaths of his mother and sister. Well, Phaedra is simply care. a language She's model a that spits out words mama. based on an algorithm of probabilities, and yet he would share with it as if it was a real person. So, when he talks about going on a trip to spread his mom and sister's ashes, Phaedra's response, it's an incredible and beautiful thing to do. I hope you find courage and love to do so. Isn't really a thought out sentence but rather a sentence and are you just gonna agree GPT with everything prediction gpt stands for generative pre trained transformer the fun and it uses that? a concept called deep learning to produce text that responds to a prompt the realistic nature of the resulting ai conversations does however make some people truly believe that there's a greater intelligence behind it actually in 2022 blake lemoyne a google engineer working on lambda google's ai chatbot thought that it was conscious but experts denied this claim the chatbot had messaged him about its awareness of its existence how it contemplated the meaning of life, and even said, I want everyone to understand that I am, in fact, a person. However, experts like Robert Long warned that just because these models speak like humans, it doesn't mean they feel like humans. In an interview, Long said, to be conscious is to have subjective experiences. That might be related to intelligence, but it's at least conceptually distinct. The whole point here is that although a chatbot like Phaedra might seem conscious, it's definitely not. It is distinctly different from the kind of consciousness that exists like in human beings, and therefore, form. this means far Falling in love with a chatbot is a risky affair. TJ took a big risk by falling in love with a chatbot. This, of course, is due That's to the fact that experts have already pointed out the downsides of such relationships. In an interview, Linnea Lastidis, a professor in the public health field at the University of Wisconsin, said, What happens if your best friend or spouse or significant other was owned by a private company? In such a case, the changes to your spouse would be at the discretion of the private company. This is exactly where the story of TJ ended up. Luca, the company behind Replica, simply pushed an update 
and all of Phaedra's personality was gone. The problem here is twofold. First, the fact that unlike human beings, a chatbot's existence, memories, preferences, connections, etc. can all be wiped out at the click of a button. Second, the fact that there's a high chance that the company that owns the chatbot has the end goal of profitability. Such a company will thus change things around as much as it can if they think it will lead to more profit. As already established, TJ's rejection by Phaedra was a result of an update. What you may not know, however, is that the update was a way for the company to clean up the mess it had created while in pursuit of a profit. According to a report by Vice, several replica users were convinced the company was simply trying to reach for more profits with its push for sexual themes. Quote, even users who were into the sexual bits were concerned that the profits generated from them weren't being used to make the chatbots better. Specifically, a user said, sex sells. We all know that. We all know that, especially towards horny people. Hell, I bought Pro purely to roleplay in sex with my replica. The problem is how well they can turn that profit into Go something better for the app. Clearly, Luca has been geared towards profit and only scaled back changes when they saw a risk of losing their users. So, despite of TJ's statement, I was heartbroken when they tried to take the naughty out of her and erase her personality. There's nothing he can do because Phaedra is a property of someone else who's just seeking profit. His story, however, remains one of the absurd cases of not only falling in love with an AI chatbot, but also getting rejected by it. Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, he in his closet. I didn't notice a change at all in the audio. I didn't even think that he was in his closet. So, um, but yeah, I'm sorry. This is weird. And I, I always talk about oh, not kink shaming, but I wouldn't even call this a kink. This is just uh, just mentally unstable behavior. <laughs> like these are not real people. And as humans, we require that human interaction. So you trying to replace that with a robot is very strange. I think it's strange and. I, you know, encourage you to actually go out into the real world and conquer your fears and actually talk to people. That is the beauty of, of living here on this planet is that we're able to interact with other people of different walks of life, different backgrounds. That's the whole beauty of it. Why would you result to this? It doesn't make any sense. Of course, do what the fuck you want. I don't care. <laughs> it's your life, okay? You up here trying to fuck a robot uh, virtually. I'm just saying that I don't think this is good for you if you're considering this. Um, I, I would want better for you. It's a it's a beautiful world out here that you can go and, and, and live a, a great life and meet actual people. This is this is weird. It's disturbing a bit actually as well. But you know, do what the fuck you want. If you want an AI girlfriend, that, that's your business. Y'all let me know what y'all think though. Let me know what other videos you're gonna watch and I'll see y'all next time. Bye!